asked my clients, I said, if you were in a relationship with money, what would money say about you? Mm. Are you consistent? Are you inconsistent? Consistent? How much time do you invest in your money? How much time do you spend taking a look at your budget to cut back and to analyze what your expenditures were for the week? Hey family, I'm Ramesha Nicole and you're doing live with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Ramisha, hey friend. Hi, Kish Kish. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for saying yes to having a conversation with me today. You, you are what? more than welcome. I am good. I'm good. All is well in these parts. All is well. Continue to um, get real with myself so I can experience freedom in every area of my life. And see, and that's why I got you on the podcast, because of that right there. <laughs> that's why I got you on the podcast, because we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about getting real on today. But before we jump into it, I like to start off every conversation with just talk about how I come to know the person that I'm having a conversation with. All right? Yes. So, family, Ramesha and I were in a um, online accountability group, Facebook accountability group. And did you reach out to me first? Yes, I did. I you did. Reached out because we live, we both live in Texas. Uh-huh. And so she reached out to see exactly where I lived and kind of close, kind of close, close yeah. enough where we can actually get together and meet up. And we did just that. I don't know about you, Ramisha, but when we met up for the first time, I expected to probably meet up for like maybe, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes at the max. We was in like an hour, hour and a half. Hour and a half. Almost two hours. And then to come to find out that we knew a, a person mutually, then that completely blew my mind. Yes. Small world, right? Yeah. Shout out to Sakara because we love Sakara. We I love Sakara. That's she sister. Is, she's, she's the best. <laughs> we love Sakara. She's the best. But yeah. And so after that first meeting, it, I swear, sitting down, having a conversation with you, it was like I had was just talking to just my girlfriend, real old girlfriend. You couldn't yeah. even tell that we had just met, like for real. Yeah. Just met. It was so cool. Yeah. 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 We run in the same circles. That's how you know that you were good people. Yeah. And that is aligned, right? Yes. And that is aligned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was that day that I knew I was going to have you on the podcast. I just didn't know when. Yeah. Likewise. I knew that I was preparing to jumpstart a podcast. I just didn't know what the logistics look like. I mean, you know, I've already had you on the show and I'm still walking in those words of wisdom that you shared with the Freedom Fighter community every day, every day. I'm learning how to show up as that healed woman and not that broken little girl. So thank you, friend. Thank you. You just gave me chills because that's a daily, that's something that I work on daily too. Yeah. I, I was able to say that because that's something that I'm experienced and I needed to share. That's how you yeah. know something comes from an authentic place. And, yeah. you, and you guys, if you're wondering what we're talking about, uh, Ramisha has a podcast called Get Real with, with, with Ramisha Nicole. And I'm going to put the link to my episode because it has yeah. already dropped. Yeah. And I'll put the link to, to my episode in the show notes. So definitely check that out. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to talk about finances today, but we're going to talk about finances from a little bit of a different perspective. And you were the perfect person to have this conversation, you know, um, when the pandemic started, because at this point we're into it probably like five or six months into the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people, when it first hit, a lot of people thought that by September, oh, we're going to be back to normal. We're going to go back to our old regular way of life, our old normal, right? Yeah, for the people who who are not able to see, and so it's September, and it's like probably in some places the numbers are on the rise, right? And so we have no idea, you know, how long this pandemic is going to last. And I truly believe that for a lot of us, the pandemic exacerbated Mm -hmm. our then current circumstances as opposed to completely completely changing it, right? right? Right. And so I know with you all the time, you talk about how 
getting out of debt and getting our finances in order requires us to, you know, evaluate our mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. Like we need to put our whole mind, body, and soul into, you know, becoming debt free. Explain to us what you mean by that and why is that important in this current climate? Well, first and foremost, one of the things that you mentioned was that people thought that we were going to go back to things how they were normally. We don't want to go back to old ways because, and you know, I'm a God girl, so I'm going to reference the Bible here and I hope that your listeners are okay with it. But in Isaiah, it says that God says, I'm doing a new thing. We can't get so caught up in doing the same thing over and over again because we know that the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over again, but you think that you're going to get a different result, right? So we can't keep showing up the same way. And what I mean by true debt freedom, and I always say that true debt freedom is in your mind, body, and soul. And what I mean by that is if you are not free and whole in your, in your mind, if you're not free and whole in your soul, if you're not free and whole in your body, that is going to continue not only to affect your finances, but it's going to infect your finances. Mm, I love that. You guys catch what she said. Infect your, your finances. Break that down for us, Ramesha. So let's go in terms of thoughts. And the reason why I'm talking about thoughts so heavily is because before you can experience freedom in any area, in, in any area of your life, you first have to experience freedom in your mind. Let's think about all of those limiting beliefs that we learned growing up. And you and I talked about that. You know, we weren't taught financial literacy or the things, you know, the exposure, the things that we saw, right? The things that we heard. So you've got to tackle your mindset. Oh, I don't have enough money for this. No, it's not that you don't have enough money. Let's take a look at your budget. First and foremost, do you have a budget? Let's take a look at your budget and let's kind of see some areas where we might be overspending. That way we can kind of cut back. I'm not saying that to completely omit it, but let's take a look at an area where you can cut back so you can utilize some of that money to, money to tackle your debt, right? We heard things like money doesn't grow on trees, okay? And so let me tell you something. My mouth has always gotten me in trouble. So I would always say, well, money does grow on trees because money is paper and paper comes from a tree. So that means that money does come from, right? So right, <laughs> really learning how to like shift your mindset right around those things. It's not that, you know, money doesn't force say, quote, in quote, air quote, grow on trees. But how are you managing your money? What does that look like for you? How do you view money? If you, I asked my clients, I said, if you were in a relationship with money, what would money say about you? Mm. Are you consistent? Are you inconsistent? Consistent? How much time do you invest in your money? How much time do you spend taking a look at your budget to cut back and to analyze what your expenditures were for the week? And then for the month of August, I said that I was going to go back to my digital app, but I had started going back to paper and pen so that I could literally take my calculator, take my pen and paper and actually go and take my receipts and subtract. Okay, I might be spending too much here. Let me finagle. How can I move things around, right? And at the start of every month or we get paid bi-weekly, I'm an educator by trade, we get paid bi-weekly. So I always sit down and I take a look at, you know, I create my budget for those two weeks, right? And I always make sure that I allocate money to go into my individual retirement account, right? Mm -hmm. There's a certain equation that I've created to help myself in terms of paying my bills and op my operating expenses. But I also make sure that if I've got to cut some areas and I don't believe in, I don't believe in depriving yourself, but I do believe in the power of sacrifice, right? So mm -hmm. actually, you know, having that time where I'm sitting Sitting down looking at my budget and I do what's called finance Fridays where I take a look at the end of the week and how much you know I've spent whether it's in my business or whether it's in my personal you know my personal account let's take a look at those numbers and what they look like but I said all of that to say that it, it, it starts with a mindset shift it all starts with a mindset shift and if you're not free and whole the things that you were told the things that you were exposed to if people only used credit cards Yes, it's okay to have a credit card, but that money better be sitting in your account so that you can go ahead and pay it off. You can have a healthy relationship with a credit card, but the money must be in your account. If the money is not in your account, this is my personal belief, then you shouldn't be spending on a credit card if you can't pay it off as soon as you charge it. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. And I love the fact that you posed the question of, you know, what would your money say about you? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, 
to further your point about mindset, that requires us getting to the root of the issue, getting mm-hmm. to the root of why we're having this you know, this is consistent or this bad relationship with money. Why do we view money in such a negative way? And it can go back to the things that we heard as a child, like, you know, money don't grow on trees. Because who haven't heard that? Because I know I did. Because my mom would say that all the time. And words are powerful. And another thing, too, that my mom will always say was, I'm broke. I don't have any money, you know? And so she would say that all the time, even when I know that, you know, the the welfare check had came through. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say that I was, you know, grew up on welfare, even when it did come through. She will always still say that, you know, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, right? So when you're constantly saying that, then that's what you're going to manifest in your life. And so, again, just like you said, my mom didn't teach me financial literacy. So, you know, growing up, once I was an adult, I had that scarcity mindset, Mm -hmm. right? I didn't know how to manage my money. You know, I was always broke. Every time I looked at my page, oh man, I'm, I'm broke, you know? And it's just like, but you haven't even managed your money yet, Key. Have you split yeah. it up? Like, what, what, have you, what have you done? It's yeah. all about how you view the situation. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my sister is teaching my niece who's 18, you know, money management, you know? And um, she just landed a job. And so it's not making a that much money obviously but it's a lot for her and you know she's getting her you know getting her paychecks in and my sister's trying to get her to understand that you know allocate your money mm-hmm. every penny every dime and when you mm-hmm. allocate it don't look at it as I'm broke I don't have any money you do you just gave your money something to do mm-hmm. you gave your, your you know every ounce of your money or every you know dime a, a penny a purpose mm-hmm. right and that's okay so it's is literally shifting that mindset, but that's going to require people to like get to the root of that issue though. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are afraid to do that, but this pandemic has forced many of us to get to the root of some things. Oh yeah. And when, when I talk about that, if you're, you know, if you're not whole and free in your mind and your body and soul, it won't only affect your finances, it infects it because things like comparison start to creep in. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about those of us who are building brands and building businesses. And I can speak so heavily on this because I recently experienced it right recently in terms of the last couple of weeks um, where you, you know, God is giving you a calling, you know, that God has given you a purpose. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you get on social media and we live in this instant gratification society, right? Social media is both a blessing and a curse. It just all depends on how you finagle it, mm-hmm. but you're looking at what other people are doing and that's not what God has called you to do. So mm-hmm. because you're dealing with comparison because you haven't dealt with your childhood issues of being compared possibly to an older sibling or possibly to cousins, right? Because that's where the root of the comparison comes from, right? Or not never feeling good enough maybe because you didn't get attention. If you have mommy wounds, if you have daddy issues, right? If you have trust issues. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't get to the root of that, then you're going to find yourself seeking validation by having the fancy website, the fancy logo, right? Because that's what everyone else has. And you think that that person is attracting, you know, the clientele when in all actuality, they're not, it -hmm. just looks good on paper. But once you get down to that root, right? Things Mm -hmm. like comparison, Mm -hmm. things like your identity, where does your identity lie? Does your identity lie in the number of followers that you have? Right. Because you'll go and spend money on again. I'm speaking to those of us who are building brands, but, you know, even think of those who are going to get these extra degrees because you want to feel validated. You want to feel important. And there's nothing wrong with further educating yourself because I'm an educator. And let me say this, my grandmother nor my great grandmother went to school past the seventh and the eighth grade. So the fact that my sister and I have both a master's, I have a master's degree. My sister has a master's degree, but take it up a step. My sister has a doctorate degree. So we believe in the power and the value of education. But too often, a lot of us are going and seeking these degrees, these higher degrees, because we want to feel important or we're trying to climb the corporate ladder. We're spending this money on all of the certification to make us look and feel important because we never felt that growing up as a child. So once you go back to those childhood lessons, then you'll be able to see how that level of unhealed and unholdness is not just affecting your finances, it's infecting it. That's where the infection comes from. When you have not dealt 
with your childhood trauma or those things of the past. Not necessarily just childhood trauma. You could have been, you couldn't have only, you know, you probably could have experienced trauma in your young adulthood, right? Where you were in a, a bad relationship and your partner never made you feel important. So you try to feel important. You overspend on, on designer bags, handbags, shoes, designer shoes, trips, just to make you feel important or to make you feel like, you know, that you, you're seen because you're getting all these likes but you've got to go back and deal with that root. So that's why we're in this, this time has really served as a blessing. A lot of people might not look at it that way, but I truly believe that this pandemic has allowed us, like you said, to get to the root of a lot of the issues that a lot of us are facing, which is showing up in our finances. I 100% agree. And let me give, I, I love the fact that you brought up the comparison and you didn't just say comparing ourselves to somebody that we see on social media, but being compared to like an older sibling or a cousin. Mm -hmm. Let me get back on that. Cause I think that's, that's great. Cause when we talk about comparison, the comparison syndrome, we usually think about it as comparing ourselves to somebody like our peers or something like that. But let me talk about the reverse of that though, because I am the oldest sibling and for years, so not only am I the oldest sibling, I am the first generation to graduate high school, go off to college to get a master's degree, to get accepted into law school. I'm the first generation to do many things in my family. And so at the time, you know, when I was graduating from high school and going off to college, it was like I was put on this pedestal like this is the example that you need to be now don't get it twisted i wanted to be that example for my siblings because we didn't have that growing up when you growing up mm -hmm. in a hood outside of chicago it's not too many examples right positive examples so i didn't mind being an example but when you have family members saying you need to be more like kiki you need to do this just like kiki did kiki did this so you need to go and do that that affected me because now i'm like Shoot, they think I got this going on, but the real thing is, you know, the reality is, is that yes, I, I look like I got it all together when I come home to visit on the holidays, but when I go back to Atlanta, I'm dealing with all of these issues that I didn't went to Atlanta with. Yeah. I'm going through therapy. I'm dealing with all of this. I'm away from my family. I am a hot mess. But when I go home, I have to be this thing that everybody is telling you know my siblings and cousins that's you know coming behind me to be so that affected me that infected my finances because I would go shopping Ramisha before I went home because I needed to look different than how I felt because on the mm. inside I was tore up but on the outside I was like I need to look like I got it together because everybody thinks just because I didn't went to college and got out of the hood that everything just immediately took off for me. Everything is just all pitchy key. And that wasn't the case at all. Yeah. That wasn't the case at all. So that affected me in so many different ways and on so many different levels. So I love the fact that you bring up the comparison syndrome, like being compared to an older sister, but I wanted, or older sibling or cousin, but I wanted to talk, you know, talk about that from a different perspective because I even remember telling my mom at one point I had the courage to tell my mom, you know, cause I heard her tell my sister, you need to be more like your sister. And I was like, mom, don't do that. Don't do that. Because now you are talking her out of, you know, operate in her purpose, whatever that is for her, because you tell her to be more like me. Like, what does that even mean? Right. Be more like me. Like, what does that even, what does that even mean? You know? And it's so crazy because my sister, you know, I am her only sister. Cause I got a million and two siblings. I'm her only sister. And she really looks up to me. And there are some insecurities that I have passed down to her right? When I was going through my healing phase and now that I'm healed, like I can even hear it and see it sometimes in her actions. And so, you know, I'm over here trying to recorrect it because I was teaching her or she was mimicking me when I was in a broken state of my life. But Ooh. nobody knew that though. Nobody knew that. So you telling her to be more like a broken version of me. So now you are literally breaking your child before she can even grow up. Do you see my face? Do you see my face? That was good. Keisha, I'm going to shout on your podcast. So, yeah. So stop telling your kids. If you're telling your kids to be more like 
somebody else, stop doing that because you don't know what that person is going through. So now I, I literally, like my sister don't know this, you know, but when I hear her say certain things, you know, I correct it on a down low because I remember where I was at the time that I told her to do that or the time that I was doing X, Y, and Z and the mental state that I was in, you know, how many people are going to do that? Nobody, not many. Right? So like comparison syndrome is real. It's real. And this is why, you know, I love the fact that you talk about mind, body, and soul as it relates to finances. 100%. So, yeah. 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 And I really had to learn that. I really learned how all of that manifested itself as debt when I went to Qatar. Mm. Because like you said, right? Talk about that. Cause I okay. love, I love that story. Okay. So you think that I'm in Qatar living my best life. So it all started when the Lord told me to stop running in January, 2018, it was 26 hours before I was scheduled to go on my 11 month mission trip journey called the world race. When the Lord says, stop running and deal with your debt. You know, I had some debt. I was upside down on a car loan and I had about 10 to $12,000 worth of credit card debt. And at the time, I had raised about ten to twelve thousand dollars worth of support. I had these supporters; these people rallied around me. You know, I'm going on my trip, and I get the day before, and I'm like, "Lord, what am I supposed to do? I still have this car loan. I don't want to put this on my family. I don't want to put this on friends. I don't want to ask for any more support. What should I do?" Call my coaches and my my, my coach. I call I'll call her Mama D for the sake of the podcast, and she said, "You know what, sweet girl? I'm just gonna recommend that you go and spend time with the Lord." And I said, okay. And I did. And I went and sat on the edge of the bed. My sister and brother-in-law live out in the country. They live in the middle of nowhere. So it was like, really, you hear Jesus. You can hear Jesus. You can see Jesus waving through the grass, right? And so I'm sitting on the edge of the bed, open up my blinds. And I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, stop running. Lord, that's not true. Um, so father, I know that you are the father of heaven and earth. I know that you are Elohim. You know how we start to try to justify right with him, right? You know how you try to like finagle the situation. <laughs> so I said, okay, Lord, 26 hours. What am I to do? And he said, stop running. I said, Lord, I know I didn't hear you right. That is not true. That is not true. So I started bargaining. Keisha, I started bargaining. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, Ramesha, stop running. And Keish, literally, tears just began to just fall. I mean, when I say fall, they, I felt, and I mean, just, a, just an overwhelm of emotions just overtook me. I was shamed. I was embarrassed. I was, I was scared. I was nervous. I was hurt. I was broken. Because again, here I was 26 hours before I'm scheduled to go on this trip and the Lord says not to go. And so I called my coach back and she said, you know, I really believe that God is going to bless you because you're being obedient. I know that he has something to store with you. So I continue to live at home with my sister and my brother-in-law and I call him my brother in love. I don't like to say in-law. So my brother in love and I worked two jobs. I was between my sister and my mom's home, you know, working those two jobs and literally everything I had went to the negative equity on the car loan and a little extra started going on that credit card. I consolidated my credit card with my credit union and they paid it off at a major bank and I just paid, you know, the credit union. And so one day I'm still trying to get my bearings together. I'm sitting in church at the top row and, um, before that, I had a good girlfriend. She reached out to me and was like, Hey, you know, I know that you're looking to pay off some debt. Mm -hmm. We are looking for an elementary school counselor. I think you would be perfect for the position. Here's the head of school's information. Send him an email. Let him know that I recommended you. And so I did, you know, I followed those instructions, got an, in, uh, an over the phone Skype interview because he had come to the States for a job fair. And let me tell you, somebody else was in that position. And, and I'm going to throw this disclaimer in. When something is for you, God will move another person out of the way because that seat was originally for you. So let me throw that out because somebody can be for, for those of you who, who, who are chasing stuff that don't belong to you. Right. You know, Cause God going to remove you too. Right. God will remove you. If it ain't for you, he will remove you or he's going to remove it and place what's supposed to be there, there. So, um, I'm sitting in church, still just trying to grab my mind around the fact that I'm not on this race with my squad, right. Who I had begun to develop these relationships with. Had the, had the Skype interview and I heard the whisper of the Lord say, check your email. 
So I bent over in church, picked up my phone, looked at it, and I had gotten the job. He said, we would like to welcome you. We would like to offer you the position to be the counselor for the 2018-2019 school year. And I heard the Lord say, I didn't let you go before because you wouldn't have been able to handle your money. Because two years before, I called myself trying to move ahead of the Lord and I was going to go work abroad. Oh yeah, I was going because everybody else was doing it. Everybody was applying to work abroad and live abroad. Yeah, but I got ahead of him and I was like, Lord, is this me or is this you? And he said, it's you. I fell back real fast, real fast. So fast forward. I go to Qatar, I'm on, my, I'm on the plane, and it's literally the day, it's August 15th, 2018. I remember it like it was yesterday, and I'm walking, doing my, my, my Facebook Live, and I'm like, okay, family, friends, I'm leaving, I'm headed to Qatar, I can't believe this is the day. You know how you're on the little tunnel, and you're yeah. in that little walkway, and you're getting ready to get on the plane, I'm like, y'all, this is really it, and I was like, this is the day that my great-grandfather passed away. Um, I want to say it was about 13 or 15 years before, and I said, this is going to be a season of life and death life to new opportunities, life to new things, but this is also a season of death, death to old habits, death to old mindsets. And recently I was reading my journal and the whole thing that I kept saying was, Lord, I want to be free. Lord, I want to be made whole. Lord, I want to be free. Lord, I want to be out of debt. Lord, if there are things in my heart and my soul, Lord, that are not like you, take them out. I was literally reading recently my journal from before I got ready to leave and get on that plane. And i Hindsight is 2020 because you're writing it. I had written it before. I had made the declaration out of my mouth. So I'm in Qatar, right? I land, living my best life. It is like heaven on earth. You have all these cultures, right? Mm -hmm. I have these friends, they're traveling and they're doing all these things. And then comes my bathroom moment when I was scheduled to come home for Christmas break. And, you know, I just started to notice some recurring patterns and some things when it came to certain family members. And I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to keep letting this control and affect me. Mm-hmm. And then I, I decided I wasn't going to go home literally like 16 hours before my eight. I want to say it was about 16 hours before I was scheduled to come home to the States. So God in these interventions where he throw them in at the last minute, and I was like, Lord, I just don't want to go. And he said, you can stay. And I stayed in Qatar for that winter break. So I took a nap, called my girlfriend, said, hey, you don't have to take me, you know, to the airport. And got in the shower, I got up, got in the shower, and I still just wasn't feeling right. I knew that I had made the right decision to stay back, right? Mm -hmm. And before you know it, I am leaning over the sink, listening to worship music, and I am bawling. And I said, Lord, I am so broken. I need you to Mm -hmm. fix me. And it all started to just come up. You talking about, and from there, I, it was the end of 2018, getting ready to walk into 2019. And I finally had to say out of my mouth, like the woman with the issue of blood, because when she spoke in Mark chapter five, you and I talked about this, when she spoke the truth, that is when the freedom began. She had to speak to him. She had to speak and tell Jesus. She had this infirmity for 12 years. And for me, I knew what my infirmity was. I know that it was a relationship that had been broken in my childhood right? Mm -hmm. And it was continued to chase me. And my best friend says is you can run, but you're going to keep taking you with you. And I kept taking me with me. Mm -hmm. I thought that going abroad, living my best life, I'm paying off my debt. People think I'm living my best life. I'm smiling on the outside, but Mm -hmm. I am dying on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I finally got to a point where I said, Lord, I'm broken and I need you to fix me. And that's when it began learning how to go back and heal that moment from my childhood, releasing people who had hurt me from elementary school, middle school, high school, my parents, forgiving grandparents, forgiving cousins, aunts, uncles, strangers, coworkers, old bosses. Literally, God began to resurface ex-boyfriends, ex-boyfriends, like People that I hadn't seen, I'm 33 years old. I haven't seen these people since I was 18, 19, 20. But you still holding on to some of that stuff. But let me tell you, that process has continued into this pandemic. God is still dealing with me on a lot of that stuff. He's still resurfacing because if I am not free and whole, that comparison, that unforgiveness, all of that stuff will continue to infect your finances. So I really began to go on this journey from being in debt financially financially 
Mm -hmm. onto this journey of internal transformation. It has not been easy, but it has been beautiful Mm -hmm. because as God has allowed me to, through my podcast, share my story, share things that I had buried deep down on the inside of me. But it all started with me getting to the root and walking and healing that little, that little girl that was inside of me, because that is how all that other debt began to manifest and show up in my life. Wow. Eventually after 12 months, literally after 12 months and God catapulted me, it it would have taken me almost three to four years to pay that loan off. God Mm -hmm. allowed me to pay it off in 10 months. Mm -mm -mm. I absolutely love that. And I love the fact that you're not afraid to admit that God is still doing a work in you because when it comes to healing, I think that we're under this impression that healing should be done instantly. And that's not the case. And we can allow people to force us or to bully us into um, healing faster or, or taking a less amount of time to really deal with the, the trauma and really truly heal from the trauma. And I like to tell people all the time that for me, it took years, right? Because for me, my trauma lasted for eight years. So if my trauma lasted for eight years, what makes me think it's going to be over in eight months? It's going to take some, it's going to take some time, you know, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that you more broken than the next person. It doesn't mean that it just means that you need to, that you need to take time. And I love the fact that you're not afraid to say that God is still doing, is still doing a work in me. And I love the fact that you also admit too, that it was God moving things and doing a work in you that caused you to pay off the debt. Right. Because, you know, I think we tend to run to, you know, the, the, the budgets and the spreadsheets, which is nothing wrong with that. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But we also need to look beyond that and look for the non-monetary things that we can do to help to pay off our debt. What are some of the non-monetary, you know, tools and tips and tricks that we can use to help us help ourselves to pay off our debt? The first thing that comes to my mind was, and I, and I heard this analogy and it completely blew my mind. You know how in the Bible it says, Lord, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have, I have over $70,000 worth of, lo- of student loans left, right? Of student loans and car loan. So Lord, I want you to pay off 70, I want you to forgive my $70,000 worth of debt, mm-hmm. but I won't forgive my best friend for offending me. That's, that's, I don't even know what to say. That's deep because people don't look at that as being equal. You know, it, it, does, it is, it is. We are in a society where everything is ranked, but in the eyes of, of God, everything is the same. No sin is bigger than the other. Right. Lord, I want you to forgive my $70,000 worth of debt. And let me say that I don't take this lightly and I don't say this without empathy because I am a school counselor and I understand what childhood trauma does to children. I have seen children turn over tables, desks, and chairs because they are hurting. But as adults, I mean, for me, it manifested itself in other ways. But let's say that you did, you have trauma, unhealed trauma from a parent. Lord, I want you to forgive my $70,000 worth of debt but I will not forgive my mother or I will not forgive my father for not being there. I will not forgive that boss who let me go. I will not forgive that teacher who told me I was never enough. I would never amount to anything, but God, I I want you to do a supernatural debt cancellation because we hope and holler in the church. And let me say, Keisha, I was one of them. But when I heard this, it completely turned because it's a mindset shift. You going to get free in your debt. It's number one, It starts with forgiveness and it starts with shifting your mind. Shift your mind and start forgiving people. Start letting that stuff go because that is why we are in debt. And I did a series over on Instagram. I'm in debt because, and I started with the number one was unforgiveness. A lot of us are in debt because we have not forgiven the people who have hurt us. And I'm not saying that I'm walking around here like some goddess because I'm still working on it because this mouth and this spirit of the clapback, Jesus is still working on it because I told you, you better start praying for your future brother-in-law, child. I told you, Keisha, we, we, I tell you this all the time. Start praying. Got the clapback, Got the clapback. Your clapback is strong. (laughs) 
He working on me every day. <laughs> oh my God. He working on me too, friend. He working on me too. I had to have a, a real hard conversation uh, this week. And when I tell you, when I went into the conversation, I had my boxing gloves right there because I was ready. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, you going to go there. Guess who can go there with you? <laughs> Lord, deliver us from the spirit of the pity and the clap bank. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so number one, really more so like we think that debt is just about, so th- those non-monetary things, evaluate your mind and evaluate your heart. I'm in debt because of untold secrets, things that we haven't told, things that we haven't confessed. I'm in debt because of unforgiveness. I'm in debt because I feel that need to be strong. And let me say to our sisters, that superwoman cape and you feel like you can't take it off and you got to do everything. A real boss, a real leader knows how to ask for help. A real boss, a real leader knows how to delegate and let people know that she needs help. Mm -hmm. That is how you get out of debt. When you start to dig and do that inner core work, that's how you're going. So that's the non-monetary thing. Yeah, you can have a budget and a spreadsheet. Take care of your four walls. That's number one. Taking care of your number, your four walls is number one, which I say your four walls. Make sure you got a roof over, head, over your head. Make sure you have lights and water. Make sure you have food and make sure, you know, you, you have a, a car to get to and from, right? That's your four walls. But those non-monetary things, because everything else, you don't need cable. You don't need Hulu. You don't need Netflix. You don't need Pandora as much as you think you need it. You don't need Apple Music. All of that adds up. You don't need it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that. I 100% love that. And and for those of you who may be, you know, missing the correlation between, you know, unforgiveness and, and, and debt and being in debt and your unforgiveness causing your debt is that when you haven't, you know, forgave somebody for, you know, causing some type of hurt, harm or saying something to you or whatever, what you tend to do is try to be the opposite of what it is that person, you know, has said or spoke over into your life. And most times we do that through our money, our pockets. So we're buying things to look a certain way. Like for instance, you know, earlier when I talked about how I will always buy new clothes before I went home, you know, on Christmas break or Thanksgiving break, because I needed to look a certain way because Mm -hmm. everybody was saying, you know, you need to be more like her. So for me, I'm just like, okay, so I need to be this person that everybody is saying that I am. When in actuality, I know I'm not. And so that affected or infected my finances. So that's what she means. Just in case you're missing it, you're like, but I don't even understand how a mindset shift. Because when you see yourself the way that God sees you, those things don't matter. And then you can focus on purpose. Because purpose is what, what should drive us. You know, even, you know, even in our businesses, not just in our personal lives, but in our businesses as well, like purpose needs to show up in every area of our life, especially our finances. And it, and it, and it, and it doesn't for a lot of us, it doesn't because, and I think because we are running from purpose and you guys, you guys know, I'm talking about myself right now. Cause I say it all the time that I, I have ran from my purpose for a long time. I ran from it for a long time and it just got to a point. I was just like, okay, God. Which, what you want me to do again? Tell me one more time. I'm just going to do that thing, right? Because you can't outrun purpose, but you can get exhausted doing it. It's exhausting to be who God did not create you to be. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. Yes, and to help is. you, you know, and to help you to overcome that exhaustion, what do you do? You spend money unnecessarily. You want to know what he told you. me today? What do you tell you today, Fran? If I can be real transparent, I'm telling you, Please do. My, I'm telling you all my business. <laughs> this is what it means to get real and experience freedom and live in your truth, right? Mm-hmm. So I go to the park today and I'm sitting out in the park. It's on the water. Literally, me, Jesus, the water, and all the bugs, okay? His creation. I said, Do you have to bring the bugs? I do you have to bring the bugs? Okay. I'm listening to a worship song and I'm in James chapter one. I'm in James chapter one. I get to verse number 12 and it talks about temptation and it talks about, you know, God doesn't tempt us. He doesn't tempt us. The temptation comes from the desire that's inside of us. And you want to know what he said? He said, you've been God for too long in your life. It's time for you to get off the throne. Child almost ran around that park. I said, I surrender. Okay, father. Okay, 
I am getting off of the throne. Ramesha has been on the throne of her own life. Get out of the way, which meanwhile, I am in a group called Get Out of the Way. I'm working with a life coach and the program is called Get Out of Your Way. If that wasn't confirmation, that's what I need to let go of. That's what I need to stop doing. That's why I'm still hurting. That's why I'm still walking around with brokenness and trauma. That's why I'm still spending money that I shouldn't be spending to buy things that I don't need to impress people who don't even know who I am or who I probably don't even like with money that I don't even have because I'm trying to be God. I'm trying to be little G. It is time for Ramesha to step down off of the throne. And that is what I am going to do starting today. Wow. Get out of your own, get off of the throne. Woo. You know, surrender is something that I've been working on for the last several months with my therapist as well, because like, I feel like God told me that and I was just so hard headed that a wind came and just like knocked me off of it and I didn't know how to get back on it. And because I didn't know how to get back on it, it just caused even more, you know, confusion and overwhelm in my life. Not until I stopped trying to get back on that throne. Literally have been working on this with, you know, with my therapist and you guys who are thinking about, oh, I can't surrender, surrender. Mm -mm, that's not my thing. I'm telling you, once you surrender and let go, let God, like that's not just some cute little catchphrase. You really literally have to let go and let God, everything will fall into place. I promise you, because once I started to surrender to God, I surrender more in my marriage and my husband looked different. Mm. Not because he did anything different. But because of me and the work I was doing in me, so me adding purpose in every area of my life and learning how to surrender and improve my relationship with my husband just by working on me. So if you do what God tell you to do, if you operate purpose and you work on you, guess what else is going to get better? Your finances. That's it, because he's going to tell you how to spend your money. He's going to tell you what to spend your money on. Uh-uh, don't purchase that. And you got to know how to listen to them. Don't purchase that. Don't buy that. Work with this person. Don't work with that person. Yep, I want you to work with that person. Nope. Mm -mm. If they ask you to sign up, nope. Gotta it's all tied to together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. But do you think we need to worry about making those you know, sacrifices now? Because so many people have been furloughed. So many people have been, you know, uh, like terminated. 100% from the jobs. And so do you think we need to be like worried about making the sacrifices right now while we're struggling in order to prepare for four years, five years down the line? Is that something that we need to be worrying about right now today? I do believe in the power of sacrifice. I don't believe in denying yourself, but if you don't have it, don't spend it. Unless you have heard clearly from the voice of the Lord because investing in coaches, which you and I know is very expensive, mm -hmm. but there, if you're looking like us, if you're looking to start a business, there are small things that you can begin to do to position yourself up. You can use free resources. You don't have to necessarily spend so much money. You can possibly try to barter services with someone who can help you teach you, you teach them, right? There are so many ways that you can make those sacrifices where you are not spending unnecessary money that you don't need to spend right now. Mm, hopefully that lands right on somebody because it's okay. Yeah, because I've bartered services, right? To get the feedback that I need. Hey, how did I do on this coaching session? What would, what would you change? What would you like? What does that look like, right? So it's, and it's all about reaching out to those people who you know are willing to help you or who are you built these relationships with, who can, who can help you. There's also assistance, you know, there are grants and things of that nature. But if you have been furloughed and you don't have it now, unless you really feel that God is calling you to utilize a portion of what you have to invest, then you follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Don't follow the prompting of what everybody else is doing because if he tell you to be still, you be still. Mm -hmm. Don't move. Don't move. Yes. Don't move. Leverage, leverage your resources, guys. That's one of the, the tips that I gave when I talked about how to relax in order to take back control of 2020. And the L in relax, I said to leverage the resources that you already have, whether or not that's people, 
in your network, whether or not that those are, you know, different organizations and institutions that's, you know, providing assistance programs for people, you know, during this pandemic, you know, don't feel like, you know, you're, you're too proud to accept help. Right. Because God blesses you in different ways. Like we in this new season right now. So it's like everything. I don't want to say everything, but how blessing showed up before the pandemic. Like don't expect it to show up like that after the pandemic or during the pandemic. God's going to be showing up in different ways. But if you're so close, you know, to how he's able to bless you, then you're going to miss something. You're going to miss something. So you have to leverage your resources, leverage your resources. That just blessed me. That just blessed me. What you just said, that just blessed me. The the blessings aren't going to come the way you, you're used to. And that's one of the things that's that surrender. That's Ramesha getting off the throne because I'm used to him doing it one way and he very well might be trying to do it a different way, right? Getting off of the throne, dethroning. And guys, get off the throne. Let God be God. Leverage your resources. Utilize the free resources you have. Barter services if you can, especially for those of you that are trying to start a business. Um, But for those of you who are not, if you are literally, you know, just in this pandemic and you've been laid off or you've been furloughed, please make sure that your four walls are taken care of. Um, One thing that I would say is, and I had this conversation with a friend recently, and if you cannot afford to pay your car note and they have to take your car, let them let them don't let the pride because pride will kill you Mm -hmm. that's going to be the death of you pride you can Mm -hmm. always build your credit back up you can always get another car don't let pride keep you in debt either Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know who needed to hear i felt like somebody needed to hear that that's why i said it don't let pride keep you in debt if it gets to that, if I'm not saying that it will, but if it gets to the point for someone and you're struggling to pay your, your car note and they need to come and get it and they want to repossess it, let them take it. You will bounce back. You will bounce back after, and you're going to bounce back so much greater than you think like that. And my best friend and I had a conversation yesterday and she said, One of the things for me, especially, is that fear of failure, that fear of falling in love, that I'm going to be so hurt that I won't be able to bounce back. She said, but once you just let go, you've had experienced heartache before, you've experienced setbacks before, but once you fully let go, once you fully let go, if you fall, you're probably going to notice that it really wasn't as bad as you thought that it was going to be. So don't create the outcome. Allow it to happen if you have to fall. Mm -hmm. I love that. Fran, have I told you you're amazing yet today? No, but I love you and you're amazing because you snatched all my edges. (laughs) You are amazing. I love you. Thank Um, you. I love you too. Before we go, give us one Audible book recommendation or hardcover book, but I love Audible. Um, What Audible recommendation that you have listened to or read that has changed and impacted your life in a positive way? I am currently reading with my therapist, oh. Get Out of Your Own Head by Jeannie Allen. Get out of your head. That's that deep throne. That's that getting off the throne. That's you being little G and not letting God be big G. Uh-huh. Get out of your head. So my therapist and I are currently reading that book. And yeah. And her name is Jeannie Allen. Allen. Mm-hmm. A-L-L-E-N. Okay. You guys, I'm going to put that in the Audible recommendations. The link is in the show notes, so definitely check it out. And one last question before before you go. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. When you hear these two words, what is your third word? All right? Self-awareness, purpose, and freedom. Of course. Of course. Of course. Brian, you are amazing. I love you, Keisha. I really do. 